welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. Today, we'll be looking at the fourth legion, the Iron Warriors, in the next video in our How to Build a Legion series. Hopefully, this is useful not only for those interested in the Iron Warriors, but for all legion players, giving them an understanding of the concepts behind army building in Horus Heresy, and an idea of what each legion can bring to the table. I hope you enjoy. A quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit those buttons down below. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate link in the description. The Iron Warriors, the Siege Masters of the Imperium, forced into thankless and gruelling campaigns at the whim of an uncaring Emperor. The Iron Warriors were my first heresy armory. Why? Well, honestly, because they're so easy to paint. Their character and style of warfare is also very appealing, uh, focusing on overwhelming firepower and brutal resilience. Their Primarch, Pederabo, is a complex character and remains so throughout the Heresy, declining the powers that the warp had to offer until after the Siege of Terror. The Iron Warriors are a fan favourite and relatively easy for new players to get on the table. So let's get into what a building a 4th Legion army looks like. First up, the Age of Darkness box set. There are two main directions we'll talk about today for the Iron Warriors, looking at both of their Legion-specific rights of war. While the Iron Warriors can be a very solid choice for some of the generic rights of war, we'll leave that up to you to explore. Either way you go, the Iron Warriors are going to want to bring a solid core of power armoured infantry. And why is that? Well, Iron Warrior tactical squads are arguably some of the best in the game, having access to shrapnel bolters. Now there's shrapnel pistols and shrapnel cannons and all kind of shrapnel things. The idea here is that essentially they're bolt weapons with pinning. Uh, their range, it's a little shorter, quite a bit shorter for some of them, uh, but when it comes to the shrapnel bolters, we're talking 18 inches rapid fire, strength four as per usual, but they are pinning. Hammer of Olympia takes them to an obnoxious level, but we'll chat more about that later on. You can do far worse than two squads of 20 Iron Warrior tactical squads. But I think two squads of 10 or 15 is more appropriate while keeping some of your Age of Darkness Marines for heavy and tactical support squads. I generally only find myself looking at large squads of Cataphracti Terminators if they have a way of deep striking onto the battlefield, which both 4th Legion Rites of War frown upon. However, Iron Warriors are one of the few legions where I'd recommend going tank heavy, so a Land Raider Spartan filled with Cataphracti is a very reasonable tactic. We can also get creative with these Terminators, converting them to either Dominators or Siege Tyrants with a little bit of 3D printing help, which we'll talk more about later on. Iron Warrior Dreadnoughts are great, mostly because all Dreadnoughts are great. They don't get a huge bonus from being silver and adorned with hazard stripes, but a Contemptor with a Gravis Power Fist is going to be wounding a Leviathan counterpart on a 2 plus instead of a 3 plus when it's an Iron Warrior, which, well, unfortunately, is a scenario that'll occur more than you want it to. You're going to need either a Siege Breaker or a Warsmith if you're sticking to an Iron Warrior right of war. Either the consoles, uh, or the, the Praetors, if you will, from the box set can look the part with a bit of conversion work. So these will definitely see some use if you're here to heresy on a budget. Overall, the box set is a very effective way to start or even expand a 4th Legion force. With that done, let's check out the Iron Warriors special role. Simple, but impactful. Here we go, it is called Rack and Ruin. When a model with this special rule makes a shooting attack or melee attack targeting, targeting a model with the Dreadnought, Automata, Vehicle or Building Unit type, it gains plus one strength to that attack. Or plus one to the strength of that attack. Very different, very different. That's it, that's all it is. So the impact on army building isn't exactly huge, but it does make certain weapons more useful. Of note, it has the biggest effect on higher rate fire weapons with a lower strength. Auto cannons and Volkite weapons get a bit of a boost from some extra strength against vehicles, dreadnoughts, or automata here. Heresy 2nd Edition isn't exactly dominated by vehicles, but there's plenty of builds out there with a few cheeky land raiders. In fact, I just played against a Salamander's army, uh, and I'm pretty sure it had three land raiders and a Spartan uh, in a 3,000 point list. That was quite the challenge. 
An opponent who brings a couple of land raiders is a sweet gift for an Iron Warriors player, and you'll be inwardly smiling as you turn the Legion's Armoured Might into metal coffins. I've gotten a lot of value out of my Laser Destroyer Rapier Batteries, which are utterly savage at strength 10, and just eat land raiders up. As a special rule, look, I don't love it. It makes already powerful weapons better against a target that was kind of already struggling on the battlefields of Heresy 2nd Edition. Its impact on anti-dreadnought weapons, and I'm talking anti-contemptor weapons as I think they're the, the version we have to worry about here, is relatively minor, as most weapons that get past the contemptor dreadnought's 2 plus save were probably already wounding on a 2 plus, or when needing a certain result on the dice to rend or breach. The Iron Warrior special rules are probably their least exciting aspect. Let's get into the juicy stuff and talk about their rights of war. Both are certainly viable uh, and present two very different but iconic Iron Warrior builds. Let's start with the Hammer of Olympia. I've always been a fan of an infantry heavy Iron Warrior's force, so this right of war uh, is the one that I've been running. So the effects are... All Legion Tactical Squads, composed entirely of models, Iron Warriors, yep, uh, must replace Fury of the Legion with the Fury of Olympia special rule. And essentially, that rule is, a model with this special rule may add one to the number of shots fired when making a shooting attack with a shrapnel bolter or shrapnel pistol. Very cool. Uh, not shrapnel cannon or gravis, shrapnel cannon. Wonderful, that's just tactical squads. Uh, next, all Legion Predator Squadrons, Legion Vindicator Squadrons, Land Raider Proteus Carriers, and Legion Land Raider Spartan Models in a detachment using this right of war ignore the effects of the Crew Shaken and Crew Stun Result on the Vehicle Damage Table. Nice. And a unit composed entirely of models that are Iron Warriors. Yep, may re-roll re -roll all failed to hit rolls of one made for Shrapnel Pistols, Shrapnel Bolters, Shrapnel Cannon, and Gravis Shrapnel Cannons. Wonderful. Limitations. A detachment using this right of war must have a Warsmith as one of its compulsory HQ choices or include Pedarabo. And no unit from a detachment using this right of war may be assigned to a Deep Strike, Assault, Subterranean Assault, or Flanking Assault. There we go. That's it. It's not rocket science. Tactical squads become a total nuisance for your opponent and certain vehicles become rather more reliable. That's what we're doing here. I'll be looking at the Legacies unit for Iron Warriors today as their rulebook offerings are a tad slim and they've got some fun options in there. Unfortunately, when it comes to an HQ option, GW did forget to give any of the Legacies Iron Warrior characters the Warsmith upgrade. So a generic Praetor it is. Alternatively, if you're going big, this is the army to include Pedarabo in, a Primarch who provides an amazing boost to the morale of your Marines as well as doing other Primarch things. You get the most out of a Praetor with the Warsmith upgrade if you happen to be running Mechanicum Allies. This is because the points you're paying are really for the Cortex controller and improved Battlesmith 3 plus rule. This is a very solid option for the Iron Warriors and lets you get deep into some narrative based army building if you lean into some Dark Mechanicum conversions. Alternatively, the Warsmith can roll with a unit of Iron Circle Manipul. Build it shield bearing, graviton mole wielding giant robots. These guys are just, they're just so cool. Not particularly powerful, um, but they're certainly hardy. Even more so if you run them with the Primarch, where they gain a 5 plus feel no pain. Rule of Cool always wins in my book, so if I were building a new Iron Warriors army, a unit of 3 Iron Circle would definitely be accompanying my Warsmith. At least in bigger games. At 150 points each, these giant metal lads are not cheap. If you're not going down the robot testudo route, a meaty unit of Dominators, the Iron Warriors Exemplary Unit, makes a great retinue for your Warsmith. The Dominator Cohort is absolutely fantastic. They're some of the most cost-effective Thunder Hammer wielding Terminators in the game, with Weapon Skill 5 to boot. If you can't think of what to do with your Age of Darkness Cataphracti Terminators, the answer is Dominators. 3D print yourself some Thunder Hammers and you're in business. Put them in a Spartan with your Warsmith, and you just, you can't go wrong. Send them up the battlefield, smack some things with hammers. The Hammer of Olympia is, of course, all about those shrapnel weapons, though. So if you're super into tactical marines, this is the right of war for you. I'd want two tactical squads in a thousand point list and probably another for every 500 points above that. Six of these squads at 3,000 points may sound ridiculous, but I don't think I'd run any other troop choices in this right of war. And you need that spicy line action. 
Tactical squads with pinning bolters that can put out three shots on the move while within rapid fire range is just super tasty. Assaulting these units is a nightmare for your opponent. Pinning charging units is a dirty trick and the Iron Warriors are all about it. The two other, uh, the, mm, the other two platforms for shrapnel weapons that I'm interested in are Predators and Sakarans. Predators can pack three shrapnel cannons, including the pintle mounted option, in addition to their main turret weapons, while Sakarans can roll with four. If you really want to drive the point home, including some of the new Decurion defenses for double pintle action during reactions, is a neat option, if not necessarily competitive. Predators in particular are a nice option here as they get quite a meaningful boost from the right of war, ignoring crew shaken and crew stunned results. Your opponent is going to think twice before shooting at a squadron of predators with anything other than tanks with 13 plus frontal armor, and certainly won't want to charge them. A squadron of three predators, one with a cheeky Decurion defensor, is reacting with 40 shots at strength 5 and with pinning, strength 6 if you're shooting at vehicles or a dreadnought. That's disgusting. Uh, you will need to consider the shorter 24 inch range on your shrapnel cannons, so ramming your vehicles down the enemy's throat is an important part of this tactic. Use them to screen your infantry from enemy units that want to assault and generally just be a pain. So we've got a warsmith, we've got some iron circle and some dominators, we've got a bunch of tactical squads and some predators and or Sakarans. What else are we looking at here? We're gonna need some heavy firepower and iron warriors are just great at it. I'll make this super simple. In this army, you want a unit of siege tyrants. Just one, because we're not monsters. I like to put a master of signals in with the siege tyrants to boost their ballistic skill, but it could be considered overkill. You want a unit of iron havocs as well, a legacies unit that should not really have been cut from the main rulebook, but it is what it is. Uh, give these guys a cognitive signum wielding tech marine if you're worried about night fighting lowering their efficiency. Once a game, potentially overkill. Uh, go with Laz Cannons on the Havocs if you can afford it in your list, because we're not here to make friends. Uh, but saying that, it is so, so very expensive in points to do so. But always, that unit will always do work, unless your opponent has some, some skill about them. But hopefully they do not. Uh, otherwise, Auto Cannons do the job in a pinch, benefiting nicely from the Iron Warrior's special rule. Lastly, I like to include a unit of Legion Rapier Laser Destroyers, which give me more high strength and low AP firepower outside of the heavy support slots, which Iron Warriors eat up like there's no tomorrow. Throw in another Cognosignum Tech Marine for the Rapiers, because why not give everyone BS5 and night fighting? I'm look, I'm pretty sure you can do this. Uh, if not, please harass me in the comments, but I hadn't really noted before that you could do that, and, and suddenly now I'm pretty excited about it. That's a really solid core for your army. If you're going big and you have the points left, other options include Contempted Dreadnoughts, because you should always have a Dreadnought. Uh, I really like Destroyers in this list. Assault or Mortalis, doesn't matter. The Jewel Shrapnel Pistols, that's just a bit of fun. Uh, and they do still get to reroll ones uh, for, uh, for misses, which is, which is really nice, even if they don't get the extra shot from Fury of Olympia. Uh, next, veterans with nemesis bolters are a tough unit for your opponent to deal with, and being able to move and still fire the most annoying weapon in the game, super spicy. That'll do for now. Hammer of Olympia is a powerful right of war that presents some really difficult decisions for your opponent and exploits an already obnoxious pinning mechanic. Peter Rabo cares not for the fun of his opponents. Next up, we have the Iron Fire. What a name. Uh, this one can be a trap though, uh, so I want to help you avoid that. So the effects are Aquitus Squadrons can be selected as non-compulsory troops. Any weapon with the Barrage special rule uh, and targeting any point within 12 inches of a friendly unit composed of Iron Warriors scatters a D6 instead of 2D6, including when fired using the Barrage special rule, so that is out of line of sight. And any unit with the infantry unit type, yep, 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 that is within 12 of the final target point of a weapon fired using the barrage special rule by a friendly model gains the stubborn special rule until the start of the controlling player's next turn. Stubborn is good. People, stubborn is really good. Any unit with the infantry unit type selected as part of the detachment using this right of war may reroll any failed arm saves taken against wounds inflicted by any attack made by a weapon with any variant 
of the blast special rule. Now, I don't believe that includes template weapons. I think it's just small blast and big blast, uh, but that's wild. Pretty much everyone is just now heavy. Just all infantry now have that heavy rule, um, but can still run. Spicy. Limitations. Let's see. Cannot do deep strike, subterranean assault, or flanking assault either. Very good. They must include more squadrons of Arquitas, Basilisks, or Medusas than it does units that have the cavalry unit type. And lastly, they must include a Siege Breaker. Okay, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to come out with this. Legion Arquitas, they suck. I'm usually pretty careful when putting labels on units, but there are zero just none redeeming features to this piece of trash unit. It's the worst. You should never take one for any reason. And GW, you should be ashamed of what you did to such a cool looking tank. Now, not taking an Arquita or, or Basilisk or Medusa, all of which are so very average, does mean we can't take any cavalry. But if you're looking to run jet bikes, you're looking at the wrong right of war. Go hang out. With, uh, with those boys from Chagoras. Luckily, there's an alternative to make sure we're still taking advantage of the rest of this Rite of War's spicy rules. It's called the Legion Scorpius, and it's fantastic. Too good, one might say. Its armor is better than the Arquita, its weapon is better than any of the Arquita's three options, uh, and it's 80 points cheaper. You can also buy them in plastic, while the Arquita has pretty much been confirmed as a resin-only take for the foreseeable future. To start this army off, two squadrons of two Scorpius seems very appropriate. You could go more, but don't, because no one will want to play against you. Now, what are the barrage weapons we've got available that aren't flaming balls of mediocrity? You've got to take a Siege Breaker in this Rite of War, which opens up Phosphex Canister Shot for Legion Rapiers, so a unit of them seems pretty much mandatory. They've got a relatively short range though, so you'll need to get them moving up the board for those first couple of turns. I quite like the Siege Breaker hanging out with the Rapiers to give them access to a 2 plus save and to act as a deterrent to an enemy charge with anything less than a dedicated assault unit. If anything does get too close, Siege Breaker, he breaks away, starts her on Fox Fex bombs, and charges on in. This army is all about that mid-range firepower, which is where you start to unlock your other Rite of War benefits. With your last heavy support slot, I'd be looking at a Leviathan Dreadnought in here. It is a great counter assault unit, which is also happy to sit 12 inches away from an opponent and unleash some serious firepower. You're happy dropping Scorpius pie plates a few inches away from it to take advantage of the lesser scatter roll as the impact is minimal if it scatters back onto your dread. So far, we've focused on wreaking havoc upon your opponent's infantry, but we're going to need something to crack mainline tanks and break transports open that doesn't take up a heavy support slot and that aren't cavalry. We could go with another unit of rapiers, but frankly, that's boring. So instead, let's look at some fast attack options. In this army, I really like a mixture of a Saber Strike Squadron with Neutron Blasters and Multi Melters, and a couple of Xiphon Interceptors. The Sabers pop transports early in the game, and your Xiphons race on in later turns to deal with enemy armor in their backline. Plus now, we're just having fun. When it comes to infantry, you're going to need an HQ with Master of the Legion. You could go with a Delegatus, but for a bit more spice, I'd look at some of the Iron Warrior HQs in the Age of Darkness Legacies PDF. Erasmus Gold would be my pick, and I'd put him in a unit of the aforementioned Dominators, and march them stoically up the table behind an advancing curtain of explosions. Alternatively, giving Golg a proper Cataphractor Command Squad with the ability to take a st Legion Standard is theoretically the better option, if not rather more predictable. When it comes to infantry, you can really go anywhere you want. I like Breacher Squads, who can still take Shrapnel Bolters, as well as Graviton Guns. March forward, put your shields in the dirt, and start shooting with weapons that are both pinning and slowing down enemy units all while your artillery continues to bring the rain. It all just fits so neatly. A couple of smaller recon squads with Nemesis Bolters would be handy to hold your rear objectives and to snipe out enemy sergeants, increasing those chances of pinning your opponent in place. It's a dishonorable tactic, but I'm okay with it. And that's the two types of Iron Warrior armies I wanted to talk about today. Both are doing terrible things to your opponent during the shooting phase, though in rather unique and separate ways. 
Other cool Iron Warrior ideas include an underworld assault force in termite assault drills, an armored spearhead with bulk tanks, or a brethren of iron force that takes advantage of those legacies characters that interact nicely with Automata. There are plenty of interesting options for the boys in silver. At some point, in the dark of night, at your lowest moment, you may be tempted to build a fourth legion Fury of the Ancients army. When this happens, and we've all been there, I want you to go take a good, long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and really think about what you want to be remembered for when you die. Because I assure you, if you take a photo list to a casual event, you will forever be known as that guy. Finally, I've put together a 2000 point list for a Hammer of Olympia army. This kind of force makes better use of the Age of Darkness box set and you'll still be able to look at your opponent in the eye when you turn up to a tournament. So in the headquarters slot, we've got a Legion Tartarus Praetor. Note the Tartarus there. Uh, Warsmith upgrade, he's got a Thunder Hammer, Cortex Controller and Servo Arm, which he gets from being a Warsmith, uh, and the Tyrant of Dodecathon Warlord trait. Now, of course, there are, it is it is remiss of me not to mention the Tyrant of Lysatra and the sh absolute shenanigans uh, that you can get up to with getting extra shots. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into that. Essentially, you can put a Tyrant of Lysatra with either some Siege Tyrant Terminators, you can put them with Laz Cannon Squad, you can do all kinds of horrible nasty things with them. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, it allows the enemy to dictate where that unit is making reactions um, and just makes them a bit too predictable for my liking. So I prefer the Dodecathon action to mess with your opponent, mess with their deployment zone, mess with their terrain and just be a bit of a pain. Uh, so that is that is what that is. Uh, next, in the elite slot, uh, I've included the two iron circles that I talked about before. Could only afford two at 2000 points, but I still think that's a bit of fun. I've also put in a Legion Reaper Laser Destroyer Battery, went for a big ol' three because they're just so good. They're great at shooting at tanks, they're great at shooting at Dreadnoughts, and even in a pinch, they'll uh, take out a couple of Terminators for you. Big fan, big fan of that unit, and they can move, they can move and shoot with just such a good weapon. Strength 10, strength 10 against vehicles in this game. It's Wounding Leviathans on a 2+, plus when it's an Iron Warrior one. So good. Uh, next, troops. I went very simple here. Four squads of tactical squads, all with shrapnel bolters, nothing fancy on anybody, not even artificer armor on the sergeant here. I went bargain basement so I could uh, so I could go real hard on the heavy support area. But four of them should give you enough line action at 2,000 points. Next up, heavy support, uh, Iron Havocs, a big old unit of 10 of them. I originally tried to put Laz Cannons in this squad. It was way too expensive. So instead, we just went with Auto Cannons on, uh, on these guys here. Do note the Legion Vexilla, which may seem like a strange choice for a heavy support sc style squad. Uh, but the reason, of course, is that often this squad is going to want to be on the back line. And if you lose let's say three Iron Havocs and fail a morale check, which is not unreasonable, you do not want to be running off the board. Now, a Vexilla essentially makes it impossible for you to run off the board, so even if you're deployed at the back of your deployment zone, you fail one little leadership check, you're not gonna be running off with an almost 300 point squad. You will stay on and come back to fight another day. So any squad that you are planning, infantry squad, if they can take one and you're planning on running them at the back of your line, put a Legion Vexilla in there, people. Be smart. Next up, Siege Tyrant Terminators, or Tyrant Siege Terminators, if you will. Is it Tyrant Siege Terminators? I always thought it was Siege Tyrant. I'm gonna look that up in the book right now while I'm talking live action. Tyrant Siege Terminators, there you go. I've always called them Siege Tyrant Terminators. You learn something every day, people. Uh, 300 points uh, for just five of them, so five's enough. And next up, Legion Predator Squadron, couple of Predators with Magnum Melter Cannons, which I think this army list really needs. We've got a lot of anti-infantry firepower in there, but uh, but something extra to take out Terminators would be nice. So the Melter Cannons get in, uh, and then just Heavy Bolters. All the Heavy Bolters, three on each, and Searchlights. Never forget your Searchlights. Gotta have them, people. And that'll do it for the Iron Warriors for today. A very solid Legion that will absolutely wreck any opponent that was brave enough to bring a bunch of tanks to a game of Heresy, punish them. Punish them for trying something different outside the meta. How dare they? The Iron Warriors have so many options for army building, both from a narrative and rule sense. And for those that think the 4th Legion are one-dimensional, I assure you, you are mistaken. Thank you so much for watching, and most importantly of all, 
make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for heresy. 